good good crowd this evening. Yeah. Glad to see each and every one of you out. Uh, come back and support your church, even though the preacher's not here. Uh, but uh, glad to see each and every, every one of us. We, uh, uh, I think we had a good service this morning. Seemed like everybody was in a good spirit. So, Larry was watching us live. He he had the security system brought up, so he was watching us live. And if you're watching, hey, Larry, <laughs> I talked to him this evening, and uh, uh, Lana's doing uh, Lana's doing a little better, uh, and uh, still got a uh, cough and, and running a little bit of a fever. I think once in a while, Larry was getting hoarse. Of course, he said, you know, I, I do that anyway, so uh, maybe maybe he's going to skate on it. We'll, we'll we'll know in the next couple of days. So. But uh, he, he's excited. He wants to get the family together, and he's got a big old turkey. So he's, he's looking forward to, to that, as is probably most of us. Uh, be a good uh, Thanksgiving to be with our family and, uh, and uh, have, have a good time with our, with our family and their kids. And, and uh, I hope you all, all do. So we're going to uh, uh, open with uh, uh, prayer. And uh, remember those who are sick. Oh, well, we have some that are very sick, and we pray that you would just I pray the Lord would just touch them, fulfill their needs. Remember the the funeral uh, Tuesday. Charlene, Charlene be out uh, uh, tomorrow evening from five to nine, and and then uh, the funeral will be at eleven. She'll be out for a while before the funeral. Funeral will be at eleven, and we'll have 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 dinner here at the church. Uh, go ahead. I guess maybe go ahead and make the announcement. Uh, remember, prayer meeting, midweek service. Only it's not midweek; it's Tuesday night, and uh, uh, moved it up as we always do because of uh, the holiday to give everybody more time. And and uh, so we're we're looking forward to looking forward to that. I got to find out some figure out something to preach on. I'm, Larry Larry run me dry everything I had ready, so we'll uh, we'll get uh, we'll get there. So. Brother Larry, would you lead us as we pray? Amen. Oh, James, just sing some songs. Hey. Had good choir practice this evening, so <clears throat> I still got a little bit of voice left. Page 37, if you want to use the hymn, though, My Wonderful Lord. I have found a deep peace that I never had known. And a joy this world could not afford Since I yielded control of my body and soul To my wonderful, wonderful Lord My wonderful Lord, my wonderful Lord By angels and seraphs in heaven adored I bow with thy shrine, my Savior divine, my wonderful, wonderful Lord. I desire that my life shall be ordered by thee, that my will be in perfect accord. With thine own sovereign will, thy desires to fulfill, my wonderful, wonderful Lord. My wonderful Lord, my wonderful Lord. By angels and seraphs in heaven adored, I bow at thy shrine, 
my Savior divine, my wonderful, wonderful Lord. All the talents I have, I have laid at thy feet. Thy approval shall be my reward. Be thy store great or small, I surrender it all to my wonderful, wonderful Lord. My wonderful Lord, my wonderful Lord, by angels and seraphs in heaven adored, I bow at thy shrine, my Savior divine, my wonderful, wonderful Lord. Thou art fairer to me than the fairest of earth, Thou omnipotent, life-giving word. O Thou ancient of days, Thou art worthy of praise, My wonderful, wonderful Lord. My wonderful Lord, my wonderful Lord, by angels and seraphs in heaven adored, I bow at thy shrine, my Savior divine, my wonderful, wonderful Lord. All right, the next one is going to be Near the Cross, page 180, or 169, I'm sorry. Jesus, keep me near the cross. There, a precious fountain, free to all, a healing stream flows from Calvary's mountain. In the cross, in I stood one day, love and mercy found me, there the bright and morning star shed its beams around me, in the cross, in the cross, be my glory.
last one will be page 264, Kneel at the Cross. <clears throat> Kneel at the cross, Christ will meet you there, come while he waits for you. List to his voice, leave with him your care, and begin life anew. Kneel at the cross, leave every care. fall those who are anchored there kneel at the cross leave every care kneel at the cross Jesus will meet you there kneel at the cross give your idols up Look unto realms above. Turn not away to life's sparkling cup. Trust only in his love. Kneel at the cross. Leave every care. Kneel at the cross. Jesus will meet you there. Okay. Our guys come, we'll take our evening offering. It's back. <laughs> I couldn't even feel it. <clears throat> Go ahead, Brother Matt.
One day when heaven was filled with his praises, one day when sin was as black as could be, Jesus came forth to be born of a virgin, dwelt among men, my example is he. The word became flesh and the light shined among us, his glory revealed. Living he loved me, dying he saved me, buried he carried my sins far away, rising he justified freely forever. One day he's coming, oh glorious day, oh glorious day. One day they led him up Calvary's mountain, one day they nailed and rejected bearing our sins my redeemer is he hands that healed nations stretched out on a tree and took the nails for me living he loved me dying he saved me buried he far away rising he justified freely forever one day he's coming oh glorious day oh glorious day one day the grave could conceal him no one day the stone rolled away from the door. Then he arose over death he had conquered. Now he's ascended, my Lord evermore. Death could not hold him, the grave could not keep him from rising again. Living he loved me, dying he saved me, buried he carried my sins far away, rising he justified freely forever, one day he's coming, oh glorious day, oh glorious day. sins far away rising he justified freely forever one day he's coming oh glorious day oh glorious day
climbing in steps either. Choir practice today, because I tell you what, my old leg gives out after a, a little while. Turn with me to Ezekiel chapter 39. We've started this study uh, last week and uh, looked at chapter 37. And uh, uh, I like that song, James. I believe that it's coming as soon. Amen. The next thing on God's prophetic calendar is not one thing that needs to be fulfilled before he comes and gets his, gets his bride. I truly believe that. Uh, now, there's some things that's getting going to happen uh, after he comes. In fact, there's seven years uh, of tribulation on this earth, and then he's going to rule and reign for a thousand years uh, here on earth, and we're going to be we're going to be with him. So, why do we study Bible prophecy? I think. God intended us to. He said, blessed those who read and study and understand. Uh, it helps us to know the nearness of his coming and what to expect in the, in the days to come. He didn't want us to be blindfolded. He gave us everything that we need to, need to know. Now this Ezekiel 38 and 39, as we've been studying, is going to happen probably sometime between the, the first to the middle part uh, I believe of, of the uh, of the tribulation period, it's called the Battle of Gog and Magog. Now, there's two Gog and Magog battles in the Bible. There's one at the uh, at the start of the tribulation period, and there's one at the, at the end of the the millennial reign. We're going to see some of the same characters uh, come back uh, after Satan is released re released out of the bottomless pit of his thousand year stay. Uh, as we looked at this, uh, we can see today uh, how things are, 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 coming to, to, are coming together. Things are beginning to uh, line, line up for, for this event uh, to, to happen. Uh, in 38, chapter 38 of Ezekiel, he gives us the reason why. And he tells us who, and he's going to tell us where, and he's going to tell us when. Uh, and uh, he gave us uh, the reasons. He said, Son of man, set thy face against Gog, the land of Magog, Magog, and chief prince, which is Rosh, of Meshach and Tubal, and prophesy against them. Well, who are these? Well, Gog is the head of, of Magog. Or who's Magog? Magog is Russia. It says that the nations to the far north, you run a line from Israel to the far north, it's Russia. He's going to come together uh, with a band uh, of, uh, uh, he said, and he gives us the names of Persia, which is Iran, Ethiopia, and Libya, North Africa, and Gomer, some of the Germanic tribes. Yes, yes German, Germany is still is very anti-Semitic. They do not like Israel one bit. And uh, Tagarma, uh, Turkey, some of the other tribes. Now, they're going to come together in a, in a coalition uh, in the last days, I believe after the, after the rapture of the church, uh, says that they're going to attack Israel when they're in a time of peace. Well, you think Israel's been in a time of peace? Israel's not, never been in a time of peace. And how are they going to get that peace? Well, they're going to get that peace whenever the Antichrist comes and signs a seven-year covenant that's going to start the seven-year tribulation. So that what make me believe that this is going to take place somewhere between the time of the covenant and the middle, probably towards the middle of the, of the tribulation because they're going to rebuild the temple. They're going to get uh, what they want. That's why they're going to sign the covenant because they want back on that temple, temple mount. Well, all these Muslim nations, uh, the Antichrist is going to say he's going to protect them from them. So they're going to feel like they're, it's going to be a false peace. And uh, uh, they're going to uh, put together uh, uh, an army uh, from, from Russia down through uh, the, the Muslim nations, North African nations, which are all Muslim. 
and they're going to come against it. How do we know? He said, uh, let's look, go ahead and jump to chapter uh, 30, 39, and uh, we, see the, we see the setup in chapter 38. Well, we see the results in, in chapter 30, 39. He says, therefore, thou son of man, prophesy against, against uh, uh, Gog and say, thus saith the Lord, God, behold, I, will, I am against thee, O Gog. Why is God against Gog? Well, Gog is the, the leader of Russia. He is their prince. Right now, it happens to be Vladimir Putin. Will it be him when he's there? We don't know. Putin's kind of under pressure right now anyway. They'd like, a lot of people are aware would like to get rid of him and replace him. So we do not know, but right now, that's, that's, that's who it is. He's the prince of Meshach and Tubal. And you look and you go uh, get into the, the, uh, the language interpretation, uh, it's Moscow. And, to, and uh, the other uh, uh, big city up there, I, I, Taburk, I believe it's how it's uh, pronounced. But anyway, he said, Thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I am against thee, because they are anti-Christ. They are Muslim. They are atheist. They are everything against the God of heaven and against Jesus. And they're going to pay for it. They're going to pay the price for it. And I told you last week, I, I kind of like to, like to say this is, this is Pharaoh too. Because God used Pharaoh with the children of Israel. And what did he do it for? It's to get the glory to show his power. Well, look in 38. Look in, in chapter 38 and down in verse 23. So thus saith, I will magnify myself and sanctify myself. And I will be known in the eyes of many nations, and they shall know that I am the Lord. The world today does not know he's the Lord. Father, as we come to you, as we look into this passage of Scripture, help us, Lord, as we try to finish this up tonight, that we might realize the nearness of your coming. As we, these last days, we start to see all the dominoes fall into place. Things are lining up for your scripture to be fulfilled. And help us, Lord, to learn and to understand and to stir hearts in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Therefore, thou, shalt, thou, thou son of man, prophesy against Gog and say, Thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I am against thee, O Gog, chief prince of Meshach and Tubal. I will turn thee back and leave a sixth part of thee. Now, we know as we read that passage, he says the same thing over in chapter 37. He's going to put a hook in his jaw, and he's going to bring him out, and he's going to lead him where he wants him to go. God can make people do things, and they don't even know why. And that's exactly what's getting ready to happen here. He's going to use all these nations for one thing. He's going to magnify his name in the world. He's going to show his power of who he is and to turn them to come into the nation of Israel. And, and of course, they, they're sitting and, and, and what you don't think they're not watching us. They're watching every move that we make. They're watching every move that Israel makes. And they're going to wait until the right time. They don't do anything until the right time. Well, God's going to put it into his heart when that time will be. And this coalition is going to come together, and they're going to come into the nation of Israel. But he look what he says. He said, I will leave but a sixth part of thee, and I'll cause thee to come up from the, from the north parts, and I will bring thee upon the mountains of Israel. They're going to invade the land of Israel, Sometime during, I think, the, like I said, the middle part of, this, of the tribulation period. He said, I'll bring him upon the mountains of Israel, and I will smite thy bow out of thy left hand, and I will cause them, thine arrows to fall out of thy right hand. God is going to, uh, some believe that he's just, it's just all going to be just supernatural. 
that God's going to speak it and it's done. And it could be. We're not told anything different. But as we read on a little bit, I think that Israel's going to have something to say about this too. They're a mighty power, folks. They have nuclear weapons. They have, you know, look what they're doing over there now. They're taking their country back. So, he said, but as Russia starts to come, God's going to have his hand in this. He says, I will smite thy bow out of thy left hand, and I will cause thine arrows to fall out of thy right hand. God's going to cause it. He said, thou shalt fall on the mountains of Israel, thou and all thy bands, and the people that are with thee. He said, this coalition that you're bringing together, they're not going to get anywhere. He's going to cause them to fall on, 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 the, on, the, on the mountains of, uh, of Israel. And I believe, I believe there's a combination of things here. And that not only is it the power of God, but I, I believe he's going to allow Israel to be victorious. Uh, and I, I, I would say, of course, you've got to understand that when we start talking from, from this time on all the way to the end when Jesus comes back and fights the battle of Armageddon, this is all World War III, folks. The world is involved in this. And we're almost, we're almost there right now. Uh, as the, the nations of the East come against Israel. And now I know this is just a terror group, but you look at who is supporting them, it's all those same Middle Eastern nations that's gonna be involved in this. And they're receiving, they're getting their support from Iran, they're getting it from Russia, they're getting it from all over. So you can start to see the players all starting to come together. But he said, I'm gonna bring you in there. He said, I'm gonna cause you to fall on the fifth, on the, on the nation. He said, he's only gonna leave a, a sixth part. This army is gonna be practically wiped out. He's just gonna leave them leave a few. Now, there's uh, nuclear weapons out there that are available, available that could cause uh, great destruction on them without really doing too much trouble to the, to, to, the, to the land and not leave as much radiation as some of the ones that we've seen in, in, in years gone by. So they have that capability. But they're not going to make it very far in Israel. They're not going to make it to Jerusalem. They're going to be struck down before that, that ever happens. He said, thou shalt fall in, in the open fields, for I have spoken it, the Lord God. God said it. God, it's going to happen. But back over in, 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 in 38, in verse 21, uh, he talks about some of the things that he's, he's, that's going to happen along with this. He says, I will, I will call for the sword against them, him throughout all my mountains, saith the Lord uh, God. Every man's sword shall be against his, his brother. He's going to confuse them. They're going to be, they're going to be fighting each other. He's going to cause a great earthquake that's going to confuse them. They're going to turn their swords against themselves and says, I will plead against, against him with the pestilence and of blood, and I will rain upon him and upon his bands, upon the, on the, the many people that are with him and, and overflow with rain and with great hailstones and with fire and with brimstone. He's going to cause great hail to fall. Fire and brimstone, I believe, is going to come from the implements of war. He didn't know how to explain the implements of war that we have over there today. He didn't know about tanks and vehicles. That's why he talks about horses and shields and bucklers and, and, and implements of war. He really, he just explained them the best way that he could. And I believe the fire and brimstone is the military power that's being, being brought to bear that, that God's gone, going to allow to, to take place. He said, I will send fire on Magog and among them that dwell carelessly 
in the aisles. We talked about the aisles, uh, some of the European nations, and the, 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 and it talked about the aisles, and it talked about the cubs, and and we don't we're not given an entire list of all the people that's going to be involved in this, but it, these we are given the, the main players. Is America going to be involved in it? We don't know. We just don't know. We don't know what the political attitude is going to be at that time, whether we're still going to be supporting Israel or we're not going to be supporting Israel. I don't see, I don't see America anywhere in Bible prophecy. I think we're at the point where our power is, is going away. And I think we're going to be pretty well in, insignificant. And it's a sad state of affairs whenever you see the, uh, you know, we're supposed to be a Christian nation. We're supposed to be, uh, support Israel. And what we see the, the support for Palestine, you know, and the Muslim nations. They're not supporting Palestine. They're supporting the Muslim nations. So we can see it starting to come together. It says, I will make my holy name known in the midst of my people, Israel. And I will not let them pollute my holy name anymore. And the heathen shall know that I am the Lord, the Holy One of Israel. Behold, it is come, it is done, saith the Lord God. This is the day where am I have spoken. He's told us about this all through the scripture. He said that day is going to come. Now I'll tell you what, now, I, I personally believe that this is the point when the nation of Israel finally accept Jesus as Messiah. And why do I think that? It's because whenever the Antichrist breaks his covenant with the Jews at three and a half years, enters into the temple which they have rebuilt, sets on the throne, on the altar, because in the abomination of desolation, he will wreak havoc, disgrace the temple, disgrace, set himself up as God in the temple of God and turn his back on the nation of Israel and start all out war against not only Israel, but those who have accepted Jesus during the, the tribulation period. Because we know from there he goes on to make the world worship him, take his mark. We can't buy, sell, do anything without his number. Israel is going to have to flee off down into the, to the desert. We, we believe down around Petra, down in there, where God said he will protect them. God is going to save her. There's, listen, there's going to be a lot of Jews die during this period of time. In fact, two-thirds of the earth's population is going to die throughout the wars from the time this starts to the, to the, to the uh, Battle of Armageddon. Now, this is not the Battle of Armageddon, folks. This is one of several battles that's going to take place. Remember, we're going to be in, we're going to be in World War III. Everybody's going to be fighting. But Israel... Is going to be the centerpiece. God said, I will make Israel a cup of trembling to the world because his people have been hated, misaligned, aligned from their very start. Have they been perfect? Absolutely not. They've sinned. God has punished them for it. But listen, one day, when this happens, they're going to open their eyes and they're going to say, we have missed our Messiah. And they're going to accept him. And that's when Satan is going to try to destroy the entire nation. But God's going to save a remnant. He's going to carry them all found down into the desert. He's going to protect them there for three and a half years. Bring them out into the thousand year millennial reign. Israel will never, they may lose a lot of people, Israel will never, ever be destroyed.
He's told us that in his scripture. And he's also said, my people, the church, the children of God, a lot of them may die during this period, but they're going to die as martyrs. An innumerable group of people, he says, stand with white robes, crying, when are you going to avenge our, our blood? This is the saints that's going to die during the tribulation period. Not everybody's going to accept him, but there is going to be a group who, who will. So as we look at this, we, like I said, we, we start to see this come together. He said, my holy name in the midst of my people Israel, I will not let them, my, let, uh, them pollute my holy name anymore. And that's all that's happened to them from the time on. He said, I am the Lord, the Holy One of Israel. They're God's chosen people, and God's going to protect them. Are they going to be punished? Absolutely. They don't accept him, but they are going to be a group that's going to accept him during that time. Behold, it is come. Whenever he starts this, he's going to finish it. Now, later on, we get back over into Revelation, we see the Battle of Armageddon. We see some of the same players. But the reason this is not Armageddon is because we see the kings of the east, which is China, brings a, a 200 million man army into the Middle East. And they come for one reason, with all the other armies that they can get together along with the army of the Antichrist. And they come for one reason, to fight God, to fight our Lord and Savior. And he's going to come back on white horses with the armies of heaven. I believe all the angels and you and I riding white horses. That's the battle of Armageddon. And whenever he, he's going to fight that battle, he's going to be the one who's going to, with the sharpness of his tongue, he's going to destroy all his enemies. He's going to set his feet on the Mount of Olives. It's going to cleave with a great earthquake. He's going to walk down that Kedron Valley through that eastern gate. And that earthquake's going to open that gate up because it's closed right now. The Muslims closed it up centuries ago because they knew it was prophesied Messiah was going to come and walk through the eastern gate. That gate's going to be open. He's going to walk in, set up his kingdom in Jerusalem on the throne of David. He's going to rule there for a thousand years. And hey, we're going to be with him. Amen. Looking forward to that day, folks. Yeah. So that's the battle of Armageddon, or Gog and Magog. And as we see this, we, we watch the players, we see the players, and every day we see it start to come together, start to come together. When's it going to happen? Jesus has got to come first. Because the covenant can't be made till the church is gone. The Antichrist comes with the answer and makes a covenant to guarantee them peace for seven years. There's the key. When is Jesus coming? I have no idea. I couldn't tell you. He may, he may come before the amen tonight. He may come in the middle of the night. I don't know when he's coming. He'll come when he gets ready. God doesn't have a time clock like we got. As things start to come together, he'll know the right time. God the Father knows, and he's going to say, son, go get your children. And when that happens, that's when this all starts. Until then, nothing needs to be fulfilled. That's the next thing on God's calendar, is he's going to come and get his bride, the church. Oh, I'm looking forward to that day. Looking forward to that day. Well, I hope you've got something now this. Uh, I know some people 
enjoy it. Some people do not. But I'm going to tell you something. I think it's very important. God's told me to preach it. And I, I think it's, it's for a reason. He told us in the very first chapter, hey, read and study this, and you'll be blessed. And I think we need to, because it shows us the nearness of his coming. Hey, we need to be about the Lord's business. We need to try to win all the souls that we can, because I, I, I don't want to see anybody have to go through the, the horrors of the, of the tribulation and try to live. It's a lot easier to live for God now than it is then. But the Satan is, Satan is a liar. He's a thief. And that's what he's here for, to lie, to steal, and to kill. That's his purpose, but to try to defeat and pollute everything that is holy. That's what got it keep kicked out of heaven. Father, as we come to you tonight, we're thankful for your love and all you've done for us. And Lord, we pray that you would just help us, Lord, to draw closer to you. I believe this is a Christian crowd tonight. And Lord, we pray that you would just, there's one here tonight that has a need. We pray that you would just give them the courage to come or the desire to come and bow at this altar. If there's anything in their life that they're worried about, get it settled tonight because we have no guarantee of daylight. And Lord, we pray that you would just, if there's just one here that just wants to come and pray about anything, the sick, our condition, the altar's going to be open. So we have a word of song. We have a stand as we sing a verse of invitation. If you have a need, just come and, and pray tonight. Get it, get it right. Just as I am. Hearts and minds are clear. Remember Tuesday night uh, prayer meeting, and everybody have a, a great holiday with your family. Remember the funeral uh, will be at uh, 11 o'clock on, on Tuesday. Visitation will be tomorrow night. Remember that. Remember the family in Bereavee. Gary, dismiss us, buddy. <laughs>